Hey everyone, this is B in editing. Today's video topic is a reflection on my journey during the vlogging process over the past month. Before the video officially starts, I just want to give you this quick note. The original video file for today is corrupted, but the audio and B-roll came out just fine. Instead of reshooting, I decided to go ahead and combine this reflections video with some footage of me restocking the wood and cleaning out the fireplace. I hope you enjoy. Maybe this can double as a body doubling video in addition to a vlog. Please, as you watch me chop wood, please keep in mind the fact that I've never done this before in my life. Thanks. Let's get to it. What I've learned from Vlogoween 2024. Today's the 28th of October, and we're coming to the end of Vlogoween 2024. Honestly, it has been a tremendous experience for me, rewaking my connection with video content creation. Hi, I go by many names. My pen name is Zach Lettercast. My stage name is Braden Kink, but most people just call me B. I first started YouTube in 2017 making videos about being transgender, my experiences in the adult industry, and my mental health struggles related to the isolation of what is now called deconstructing my faith. I went from posting about once per week in 2017 to 2019 to only once or twice a year after reaching pandemic burnout in 2021. In 2022, in a fit of dysphoria and a desire to erase myself from the internet, I deleted most of my old videos. In 2023, I considered returning and even made an attempt at posting once per month. And just as my efforts were ramping up, my bonus mom and motherly mentor died and I was understandably creatively crippled by the beginning stages of grief. My partner deployed in July of this year and is still away. And in August, I quit my job as a barista after some questionable behavior by the corporation I worked for. In September, like a dam bursting, my creativity returned in all aspects of my life, writing, painting, singing, and yes, video content creation. I used Vlogoween of 2024 to attempt to reclaim this creative outlet in a healthy and restorative way. And I learned so, so much. First, I learned that yes, I really can make a video a day. It seemed like an unattainable feat to be honest, but it's actually something that I'm very able to do, especially with a particular series I set up for myself to curate for you, my viewers. Second, I learned that video content creation just does not have to be just me talking at the camera, uh, as fun as it is. Uh, it turns out I can actually cultivate community by making videos that help me as much as they are designed to help others. Final Do It Fridays are a perfect example of this. In the absence of my partner, you, the viewer, serve as a virtual body double while I complete chores. And hopefully, this exchange provides you with the same sort of benefit. Third, and this is only partly a result of Vlogoween, I actually learned that while I thought I was truly entering my hermit era, you know, living in the woods, etc., etc., I'm actually entering my community era. I found that while filming was a priority, it was secondary in my planning to the weekly and occasional events I attend to spend time with my local community circles. I meet with my writing community circle on Saturdays. I meet with my artsy queer community circle on Thursdays and Fridays. I meet with military spouse support networks once a week, just about. I go to a local event with groups from time to time. And I make time to visit with individual friends throughout the month, be that in person or virtually. These are the types of connections that I've not had since high school, but I have now and I'm incredibly grateful for. And in that same vein, creative energy begets creative energy, it seems. Since starting my vlogging project in September, I've come into contact with a higher concentration of creative souls in these two months than I did during the entirety of 2023 and January through August of 2024. It turns out when we make space for creativity and indulge it and share it with others, we attract other creatives. And that increase of personal creative influences in one's life can amplify one's own creative energy. It's life-giving and affirming and, dare I say, joyful and kind of inherently queer. <laughs> Which brings me to the final thing that I learned during Vlogoween 2024. I need to be more vocal about my projects. For one thing, it attracts other creatives. I experienced this firsthand, real time, at a local tea house when I talked with my barista friend Basil about my contribution to the McSpurk Big Bang and inadvertently attracted a few other patrons who are absolutely Trekkies. Three hours and two pots of tea later, we had the start of what I anticipate to be a fulfilling friendship. I just saw them earlier this week. But there's even more to it on a more personal level. In my creative circles, I make sure to give space for others to share about their ideas and their triumphs. I ask people, you know, 
tell me about your work. And I offer them feedback if they want it. And I absolutely love to indulge in their info dumps. I, I, I am enamored with watching other people be passionate about the things that they're passionate about. These interactions are highly fulfilling to me and they seem to benefit those people as well. But I often use those moments as a shield to deflect from any real attention directed at me and my own work, my own ideas. I shy away from opportunities for others to actually look at my work or learn about it in any capacity because I don't think that I deserve the attention. It's not even a fear of criticism. I can handle and even welcome critical analyses of my work. If it's bad, tell me it's bad. I want to know. But what if somebody tells me it's actually good? I don't think I could physically handle that. Like, I would just curl up and die. Even now, any positive reviews I receive or positive commentary on my work don't genuinely feel real. And I make a point of making sure I'm not in the room anytime somebody I know is looking over my work. It's a kind of a problem. It's like mildly pathological, to be honest. As a result, I hide my creations and silently publish them without so much as a, you know, how you doing? My work generally goes unread by others before it's published and it's not really read by many once it's out there. I'm always ready to give others critical feedback on their stuff, but I have yet to receive any actual real alpha or beta reads on my own recent work, save one this year since like 2016. It's a problem. Writers need feedback to get better, to know what's good, what's bad, what's not working, and importantly, why? <laughs> So this month, I actually splurged on a session with a book coach on Readsy, and this is not an ad, nobody's paying me to say this, um, but I did find a person with what I felt were apt qualifications, and then we met virtually. And I struggled through the painful process of trying to explain my concept to him and show him what I had so far. I was sweating bullets, my heart rate was at cardio levels according to my watch, and I felt like I was going to just like shrivel up and die under the intense spotlight of one single person laying eyes on work that I had written and rewritten over the course of four years. It's insane. I know this is a good idea. I love this project. I've been struggling to form it into this thing that I need it to be since 2022. I built the world for it starting in 2020. I felt out the characters. I wrote the outline and the first draft and a second outline and a second draft and a third draft and then it languished for the majority of 2024 while I struggled to work on other projects amidst the creative dearth of those stages of grief. And within that one hour session, the coach provided me with the feedback that has since sent me flying through revisions. I could have used that two years ago. Finally, I had Vector, some sense of direction to cling to when attempting this final phase of the book before I finally query it to agents and publishers because yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm going to try and trad pub this book, which is insane. My mom has this saying, we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. I can't know the strengths and weaknesses of my own work because to cast a critical eye on something I made myself is nearly impossible. There's no way I could read it like a reader seeing it for the first time because I know the behind the scenes of it just all too well. And there's no way I could analyze it from a professional publication standpoint because I don't actually know what makes a good book. And that concept is changing with each passing year. So the vlogoween flavor of the month is community. I can't know the strengths and weaknesses of my own work in isolation, at least not in this season of my life. I can't genuinely create art that stands up to scrutiny and speaks loudly and boldly without community to bounce it off of, to encourage me, to inspire me, to build with. And that's what I've learned from this vlogoween. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. It's been a beautiful month, if a little warm. I really appreciate every one of you for watching. Engaging in discussion in the comments and the DMs and the Discord and being a part of this creative community. If there's one takeaway from all of this that I want to give to you, it's that creativity thrives in connection with others and with ourselves. So keep creating, keep connecting, 
and take care of yourself. If you like what you saw today, you know what to do. Join me here and on Discord every week and in the Patreon sporadically and through my mailing list and socials. All of this is listed in the end credits, which I would super appreciate you watching all the way through. And those start in three, two. Hey there, thanks for watching today's video. In case you haven't heard, I recently released a set of new and old short stories through Storyden Publications' annual thriller anthology, Distant Tales. This year's publication is titled Distant Tales, Second Chapter, and I would love it if you would check it out. I did the editing and formatting on this thing, and I'm super proud of how it turned out. And of course, it has some amazing stories that will definitely get your blood pumping for the holiday season. As a side note, if you're an author who's looking for community guidance, or publishing services, feel free to check out Storyden Publications. I work with them as an editor and formatter on a regular basis, and the founder, Tai Hakobo, is a close personal friend of mine, and I really believe in what she's trying to do. Her goal is really just to make indie authors' dreams come true at an affordable rate with high-quality services, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check them out at the link below in the description. Thanks, and have a great day.